We continue with chapter 28, The Alternate to Dreams of Fear. What is the sense of sickness but a sense of limitation, of a splitting off and separating from, a gap that is perceived between you and your brother and what is now seen as health? And so the good is seen to be outside, the evil in. And thus is sickness separating off the self from good and keeping evil in. God is the alternative to dreams of fear. Who shares in them can never share in Him. But who withdraws his mind from sharing them is sharing Him. There is no other source and choice. Except you share it, nothing can exist. And you exist because God shared His will with you that His creation might create. It is the sharing of evil dreams of hate and malice, bitterness and death, of sin and suffering and pain and loss that makes them real. Unshared, they are perceived as meaningless. The fear is gone from them because you did not give them your support. Where fear has gone, there love must come, because there are but these alternatives. Where one appears, the other disappears, and which you share becomes the only one you have. You have the one that you accept, because it is the only one you wish to have. You share no evil dreams if you forgive the dreamer, and perceive that he is not the dream he made and so he cannot be part of yours, from which you both are free. Forgiveness separates the dreamer from the evil dream, and thus releases him. Remember, if you share an evil dream, you will believe you are the dream you share, and fearing it, you will not want to know your own identity, because you think that it is fearful, and you will deny yourself and walk upon an alien ground which your Creator did not make, and where you seem to be as something you are not. You will make war upon yourself, which seems to be your enemy, and will attack your brother as part of what you hate. There is no compromise. You are yourself or an illusion. What can be between illusion and the truth? A middle ground where you can be a thing that is not you, must be a dream, and cannot be the truth. You have conceived a little gap between illusions and the truth to be the place where all your safety lies, and where yourself is safely hidden by what you have made. Here is a world established that is sick, and this the world uh, the body's eyes perceive. Here are the sounds it hears, the voices that its ears were made to hear, yet sights and sounds the body can perceive are meaningless. It cannot see nor hear, it does not know what seeing is, what listening is for. It is as little able to perceive as it can judge or understand or know. Its eyes are blind, its ears are deaf. It cannot think, and so it cannot have effects. What is there God created to be sick? And what that He created not, can be? Let not your eyes behold a dream, your ears bear witness to illusion. They were made to look upon a world that is not there, to hear the voices that can make no sound. Yet are there other sounds and other sights that can be seen and heard and understood? For eyes and ears are senses without sense, and what they see and hear they but report. It is not they that hear and see, but you who put together every jagged piece, each senseless scrap and shred of evidence, and make a witness to the world you want. Let not the body's ears and eyes perceive these countless fragments seen within the gap that you imagined, and let them persuade their Maker his imaginings are real. 
Creation proves reality because it shares the function all creation shares. It is not made of little bits of glass, a piece of wood, a thread or two, perhaps all put together to attest its truth. Reality does not depend on this. There is no gap that separates the truth from dreams and from illusions. Truth has left no room for them in any place or time, for it fills every place and every time and makes them wholly indivisible. You who believe there is a little gap between you and your brother, do not see that it is here you are as prisoners in a world perceived to be existing here. The world you see does not exist because the place where you perceive it is not real. The gap is carefully concealed in fog and misty pictures rise to cover it with vague and certain forms and changing shapes forever unsubstantial and unsure. Yet in the gap is nothing and there are no awesome secrets and no darkened tombs where terror rises from the bones of death. Look at the little gap, and you behold the innocence and emptiness of sin that you will see within yourself, when you have lost the fear of recognizing love. And from the workbook, Lesson 222, God is with me. I live and move in Him. God is with me. He is my source of life, the life within, the air I breathe, the food by which I am sustained, the water which renews and cleanses me. He is my home, wherein I live and move, the spirit which directs my actions, offers me its thoughts, and guarantees my safety from all pain. He covers me with kindness and with care, and holds in love the sun he shines upon, who also shines on him. How still is he who knows the truth of what he speaks today. Father, we have no words except your name upon our lips and in our minds, as we come quietly into your presence now and ask to rest with you in peace a while. Amen.